Over 1400 years ago, the Messenger of Allah promised, If only a day remains of this world, it should be prolonged until God sends a man from my progeny who will govern this earth, eradicate tyranny, and spread it with justice. In the years 255 AH, the world witnessed the birth of the Mahdi, a miraculous moment in an age of tyranny and injustice. With little support and a deteriorating social and political state, the Mahdi, aged six, was concealed by God away from the public eye in a bid to preserve his life from the continued threat to his life from the tyrants and despots of the time. And we continue to wait in earnest, hoping for the moment the heavenly veil is lifted from between us and the awaited. Today, more than ever before, the affairs of the world are indicating to us the imminence of the great arrival of the Mahdi. The signs leading up to the reappearance of the Mahdi are categorized into two. The Mahtum signs are those which are definitely to occur before the arrival. Signs which are Ghayr Mahtum are defined as conditional. This means that man, to a certain degree, has the ability to determine his outcome through his actions. The signs which are indefinite are typically political and social in nature such as the general decline of religion within society. We need to understand and we need to contemplate over the social state and the state of our communities which has been forewarned and predicted by the Imams, particularly by Amir al-Mu'mineen. And perhaps if a person was to reflect over this, he sees that or he or she will realize that the time in which we are living now is the time which is absolutely crucial and our actions and our behaviors will determine whether we are part of the army of the Imam and the uprising of the Imam or not, which is an imminent occurrence, um, inshallah, as we will see uh, within our discussions. There are traditions that say the economical crisis will be such that people will steal, uh, people will become corrupt and the corruption will not be seen as corruption. People will see corruption as uh, good and the evil as good and good as evil. The indecency will spread. People will not see indecency as wrong. Um, the traditions have mentioned that the Haran and Isfahan will be some of the worst places to be in. There will be a lot of hypocrites there. Uh, women and men uh, will be indecent. And some of the best places are also in Iran, like Qom and Taliqan and other places. The best of the believers will be there. And the highest number of supporters of the 12th Imam in terms of high-ranking supporters will also come from Qom. S some have mentioned out of the 313, 38 will be from Qom. Due to the ghaibah of the Imam and the prolongment of this ghaibah, the state of the communities spiritually and socially have, have deteriorated to such a manner that people are not only outside the fold of Islam through their actions, but in essence are outside the fold of humanity to begin with. You find that Amirul Mu'mineen points towards this in a khutbah very famously known as Khutbatul Bayan, where he says, إِذَا وَكَعَ الْمَوْتْ فِي الْفُقَحَا وَذُيِّعَتْ أَوْ وَذَيَّعَتْ أُمَّةَ مُحَمَّدِ الْمُصْطَفَى الصَّلَاةِ وَاتَّبَعُ وَاتَّبِعُ الشَّحَوَاتِ وَكَلَّتِ الْأَمَانَاتِ وَكَثُرَتِ الْخَيَانَاتِ Amir al-Mu'mineen says that one of the signs of these communities at the end of the day, the general state of the community, number one is imminent death of the fuqaha. As you know that deaths of the fuqaha, imminent deaths of the fuqaha is a tragedy for the community. Within the hadith we have that for every time a faqih dies or leaves this world, the skies weep 40 days over him. The beacons of guidance and the trustees of the Imam in their ghaibah, the death of every one ul alim or every one of the mujtahideen and the ulama is a great loss for us. The ummah of Rasulullah will have lost the values of salat. When Amir al Mu'mineen says that the Ummah of Rasulullah has lost the Salat, yani, number one, they do not even pray. Yani, if you think about this, the times in which we live, 
for a person to not recite Salat is seen as a very small sin, unfortunately. is seen as a very minor occurrence, as if he did not even perform a sin to begin with. Yet you find that throughout the course of this sermon, companions such as Salman and Hudayfa, they're surprised. And they say, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, will there truly come a time in the Muslim Ummah where people don't even pray? person like Salman and Hudayfa was surprised. Subhanallah, come and look at our communities. Come and look at our own households. We come and we look at our own selves. How important is the institution of Salat to us as Muslims and as Shia? This is a time where majority of the people will be followers of their desires. Number one. Number two, وَقَلَّتِ amanat That the attribute of trustworthiness is going to be an attri attribute which is absolutely rare. وَكَثُرَةِ khayanat In that khayana, to deceive people, to betray people, betrayal will be the order of the day. Lying will become a common thing. And the person who is seen to be the, the most uh, truthful will be the person who is the most lying. Uh, the people will the closest to the rulers will be the ones who are against Ahlul Bayt. These are people who do not even condemn acts which are wrong to begin with. They were to commit sins in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those sins are justified. They could be oppressing other nations or other people but this oppression to them is not seen as anything bad. They fail to see the ugliness of sin and the ugliness of oppression. Some traditions mention that um, the last king of Hejaz, which is present in Saudi Arabia, will be Abdullah. That will have some sort of um, agreement or acceptability. But once he dies, there will be a dispute in the royal family on the succession of the king and this will increase and become bigger and bigger until the 12th Imam comes. The oppressor is somebody who is respected because he has power and he can implement this power on people who are weak he's seen as somebody that is respected everybody respects him for the power that he has those people who are deemed weak, instead of them being a source of help, they looked at those people who are going to perish. The one who is strong is the one who becomes a leader or a ruler in regards to them. In terms that when we say that Walqawi in the home Malik, Amir Mu'minin is pointing out to a reality that leadership will be obtained by those people who can afford the means to exercise force in order to maintain power or in order to attain power. If you were to look into current day politics, you find that this is a manifestation of what Amir al-Mu'minin had forewarned thousands of years ago. He says that the world in itself will be governed by a number of countries that are led by children. Yani the leaders of states or people in positions of authority are children. What is meant by children? Not physical children, 9, 10, 11, 12. Perhaps it could be, but immature people taking positions of leadership. You find they're immature and hence Amir al-Mu'mineen calls them children. Drinking and gambling will become common and people will not see those as, as in... Um, and uh, the corruption will be uh, apparent, it will be uh, common and people will not oppose it. The youth will deem music to be something that is permissible whether it is music or what is known as lahu in terms of this entertainments and concerts and whatnot, it's going to be something that's prevalent. Amir al-Mu'minin says, when you look at these people, when you encounter them within the societies, these are people whose appearances are absolutely beautiful. They go through 
they would probably go through just about everything and exert utmost effort and pay utmost attention in ensuring that their physical portrayal and their physical uh, attributes are beautiful. But when you look inside them, their hearts are the ugliest of hearts. You find that? I need to ask myself, do I live at a time where people are obsessed with their physical features, looking in, cert looking in a certain way, portraying a certain look or a certain fashion. This obsession with our temporary being at the expense of neglecting the reality of our existence, and this is the soul. Men will fulfill their desires with other men and the women will fulfill their desires with other women. Same gender relationships. You find these situations. Are they prevalent within our community? Is there an active movement to make such sort of behaviors acceptable within our community? A lot of breaking news here this morning. The breaking uh, story just moments ago, the Supreme Court and this landmark ruling, the court uh, making same-sex legal, same-sex marriage legal in this country across every state in this nation. MPs in Britain have voted in favor of legislation that will allow gay marriage. A landmark decision, the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled that states cannot ban same-sex marriages. If after having reading these signs, a person is still in doubt that the duhur of the Imam is imminent, he needs to wake up and she needs to wake up and truly look into these signs. Because when you contemplate over them, you start to realize that you are at the core of a time where the duhur can happen sooner than later. There will be simultaneous problems going on um, in, in Syria, Iraq, Egypt, Yemen, uh, and some of the other countries. These will not settle until the 12th Imam al-Islam comes. While protests in Syria are increasing in size and scope, most important story in the country. The name ISIS is one that every American knows by now. They are a brutal, savage group known for public beheadings and mass executions. seen problems in this world um, that have increased and that have uh, existed but we have not seen the political problems that we are seeing today at the same time um, and uh, during the same period that we are seeing now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says within the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 155 وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ أَلَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّن رَّبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within verse 155 of Surah Al-Baqarah shows us and tells us the avenues through which 
the mu'min and the mu'mina is going to be tested. They, you know, there is a tradition that says, um, you know, gharbal is, you know, when you have flour or something like that, you want to uh, clean it because there are some substances in it which are not part of the, uh, the grain. So what you do is you, uh, you move the net so that the good goes through and the remaining stones or other grains remain, you know, are, are, are separated. That's called gharbal. So six of Islam says to gharbalun, even you, meaning the Shias, and the followers of Ahlul Bayt al-Islam, you will be, you will go through a net, meaning you will be tried in belief and many of you will not go through. You see my point? So they will remain and only the purest will go through. So many of them will remain at the top of the net. He says that's not only just once. It will happen again and then again. At each trial, many will fail and remain. So it is not that every follower of Ahlul Bayt will go through. Even followers of Ahlul Bayt will fail. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we shall test you. Number one, with fear. We, the reason of this test is what? To determine who is a true believer or not. So within the ghaibah of the 12th Imam, Allah shall test us with fear. When you are confronted with the situation of fear or when you are confronted with fear, do you submit to this fear and abandon your religion or do you uphold your religion and overcome this fear? A major world war will happen like the other two world wars have been in Europe. This final world war has been emphasized the most upon and this will be between Turks and the Europeans. And Russia and then it will break out to be a world war. Um, like the second world war uh, started between two countries and it developed into becoming uh, a war between 76 countries. Likewise, uh, this final world war will start between some European countries and Turkey and then it will grow to be a world war. The Holy Prophet ﷺ has said in one of the traditions, I think it's in the Sunni book, that the world's population will reach seven. He doesn't say seven million, seven what. But the, in recent years, in three, four years back, the world has reached seven billion. So we're about 7.2 billion in the world, the Muslim, you know, the world population. And the Holy Prophet ﷺ said that the world will reach seven and every five out of those seven will die before my son comes. One third of the world's population will die in world war and the other third will die in, um, in a plague. Plague is not only that illness which spreads through the, the, you know, the rats uh, and kills people straight away. Uh, today the science believes that anything which is contagious and kill us is plague. The war will be on the west of Iraq or Hejaz and the plague will be on the eastern side, China, India. It will kill um, one third of the world's population. Now just in China and India, two countries put together, there are about two and a half billion people. So that's one third of the world's population. But obviously, if you see the rest of the countries, in, 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 they make up a lot more. But there will be a uh, plague in that part of the world. The Ebola emergency here in America. The killer virus. Spreading much faster than efforts to contain it. Spiraling out of control. Ebola cases in West Africa approach 9,000. Hundreds of British troops are being sent to West Africa. A small number of cases will reach the UK. It will start off so many times. Um, a pandemic or whatever you want to call it. And people will take um, precaution and it will stop and it will start so many times that people will now stop to believe that there will be a, 
in a pandemic or a pandemic that uh, an illness starts, uh, starts off and kills masses, like it has done in the past in many, many times, in, the, in many centuries uh, in the human history. But the tradition says that the last time it starts, no one will be taking any precaution and it will kill huge numbers to say one third of the world's population, two, two and a half billion people will die through this illness. You shall be tested with your lives and with crop. So tested with your lives in that you find the dictators and the takfiris of the day and the enemies of Ali Muhammad and the khawarij, they try to intimidate you and they try to derail you from your religion by threatening you with your lives, whether it is through suicide bombings or mass genocides. Middle East will remain always to be the center of attention. Uh, Iraq, uh, Hejaz, which is present day Saudi Arabia, which I do not like to use, but Hejaz, um, Iraq, Palestine, Sham, the word Sham has been used, which is now four countries, uh, Palestine, Syria, Jordan um, and uh, Lebanon, they will be center of attention. So there'll be a lot of problems. The, the, the problems will arise from Sham, which is basically the four countries. And many people uh, believe that it is Palestine that has converted into Israel. That will be the center of attention. And then also in Syria, where Sufiana will come from. The economical situation will be uh, one of the worst to be seen on the surface of the earth. Breaking news here, stocks all around the world are tanking because of the crisis on Wall Street. The last couple of weeks have been the most turbulent period for the economy and the financial markets in living memory. And while banks have failed and shares have plummeted, the effects are working their way down to all of us. Uh, there are traditions that many Europeans, the word Spain and, uh, and, and Rome have appeared, but I uh, think that they mean Europe. Um, the economical situation in Europe will be such that uh, human beings will be eating other human beings. So they will be, um, like the people are saying that it is the worst time since the Great Depression, the situation will be worse than it is, that it has ever been. This is a hadith by Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, where he says, Ida ana qiyam al-Mahdi. The Imam uses one of the titles of the 12th Imam where it is necessary that if we take the name of the Imam, we stand up. So we'll replace that with Mahdi. It says, Ida ana qiyam al-Mahdi, matar al-Nas jamad al-Akhira wa ashrat ayyam min Rajab. He says that when the rising of the Mahdi is imminent in that year leading up to the Dhuhr, Shahrul Jamad Thani and the first 10 days of Shahrul Rajab will be marked by heavy rainfall, heavy global rainfall for these 40 days. issues, problems. There will be a change in, in weather. The global warming, the concept, I'm not sure if that is uh, along the same lines, but the traditions mentioned there will be winter in summer and summer in winter. You will see a huge change in the uh, climate. You find that one of these greatest signs that the Mu'min needs to be aware of that indicate the imminent Dhuhr of the 12th Imam is that within the month of Jamad Thani, and the month of Shahrul Rajab, the period of Raja begins where certain people are resurrected from the grave in order to be a part of the Ansar and the Ashab of the 12th Imam. There will be many false claims of Mahdaviyat. Mahdaviyat is basically Messianism or anyone who says that I'm Mahdiya. There will be many, many false claims. In fact, some traditions mention how many false claims. Uh, 
and there'll be many groups and there'll be many divisions. Small, but there'll still be divisions. People who will falsely claim and people who will foolishly believe. Um, and also people will develop, you know, will develop their own ideologies. Many of the people who will claim to be fuqaha, meaning I'm a Jewish, I'm a mushtahidan, will not be many. In fact, some of the worst people will be the people who will be claiming to be the leaders, uh, religious leaders. Uh, so there will be many, many false claims internationally that everyone will be claiming that I am a jurist, I am a jurist, I am a jurist. And there will be some of the worst people on the surface of the earth. Every fitna will start from them and every fitna will end at them. And when the Imam al-Islam reappears, many of these will continue to claim um, that they are big personalities. Some 70 uh, big scholars will claim, Why did you come? We were serving in your place. The الله عز وجل يقول فإذا جاء وعد الآخرة جئنا بكم لفيفة جئنا بكم من أنحاء الأرض إلى مكان معين ونستطيع أن نقول أنه هذه الحركة قيام أهل المشرق وقوم سلمان أيضا علامة ما يجري في العراق علامة الموجة السفيانية الخط السفياني الناصبي المعادي لأهل البيت وشيعتهم هذا أيضا علامة هذه علامات كلها قبل ظهور الإمام سلام الله عليه العلامات المنصوص أنها قبل ظهوره بسنة أو نحو ذلك عندنا معركة قرقيسيا معركة قرقيسيا معركة بين السفيانيين والأتراك قرقيسيا بلد روماني قديم آثاره موجود الآن وهو قريب دير الزور والرقة في سوريا فبين الأتراك والسفيانيين تكون معركة طويلة وورد ذكرها حتى في التوراة والإنجيل وورد أن الله عز وجل يعطيهم الصبر للطرفين ويمنعهم يمنع عنهم النصر وتطول هذه المعركة ثم تكون زلزلة وهزة قوية في سوريا بعد الزلزلة تبدأ علامات السفياني هذه الهزة فيها خسارات فيها مئة ألف قتيل فيها خسف في الأرض وبعد منها تبدأ علامات السفياني The most important are the last six months before the zuhur of the Imam al um, the month of Rajab is when the three uh, big personalities reappear. Uh, two are good and one is evil. The two good are Sayyid Khurasani. Many traditions mention that he is... Uh, our Sunni brothers have not said he's Sayyid, but they've mentioned there is a Khurasani. Most of our traditions mention that he is from the progeny of Imam Hassan al -Islam, And they've also called him Hassani. Khurasani or Hassani. Hassani is basically Khurasani. Khurasani meaning he'll come from Khurasan, he'll come from Mashhad. He will be a Sayyid, he'll be young and he'll be, probably his surname will be something like Tabatabai or something. Al-Sufyani <laughs> تقريبا سبعة أشهر قبل ظهور الإمام سلام الله عليه السفياني إذا سيطر على سوريا اليماني يسيطر على اليمن واليماني وزير للإمام سلام الله عليه هو يرسله ويلتف حوله أهل اليمن ويحكم اليمن هذه سبعة أشهر قبل ظهور الإمام سلام الله عليه السفياني السفياني واليماني كلاهما في شهر رجب أوله آخره بس مذكور أنها في شهر رجب 
Sufyani is called Sufyani because he's from the progeny of Banu Umayyah or Abu Sufyan. Some say Marwan, but you know, many say Sufyan. Abu Sufyan. He's the evil guy. He'll come from uh, from Syria, present-day Syria, around Wadi Yabis. Uh, so from close to Homs that you hear a lot in the news, um, and Halab. And he will take over those cities and then he'll establish it. He is very hard-hearted person. He's evil. Um, his name will be Uthman. His name is Uthman ibn Ambasa, some say. And he will basically uh, give a slogan that Uthman and his followers are the truth. Um, so implying Sufyani is the the righteous. His uh, the flag or uh, he will show will be red. Um, so many people say ISIS, but ISIS his flag is black, and their dress is also black, and their leader appeared from Iraq. So they are not um, the final or the last uh, army. Um, before which Imam al -Salam will reappear and fight against in Karbala. They are not the ones. Um, but they are along the same lines. They are evil and they are uh, anti-Imam Mahdi al -Salam, but they are not the final army that the Imam al -Salam will fight. Uh, because... Um, the final Sufyani leader will be called Uthman and not Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. He'll be Uthman. And they will all appear in the same year, same month, and same day. Many, many, many traditions mention the same day. Sufyani and Yamani fi sana zawjiyya. Tab'an sana hijriyya. Fi sana zawjiyya. Al-Imam al-Mahdi salam Allah alayhi kun fi sana fardiyya. Ba'dahu. Sana al-lati taliha. Sana fardiyya wa... تقول الرواية عن الإمام الصادق سلام الله عليه عن سنة تسع أو سبع أو خمس أو ثلاث ويبدأ بتسعة يقولون المرجح ما بدأ به الإمام لأنه بدأ بتسعة وبعضهم يقول أنه ألف وأربعمائة وتسعة وثلاثين تنطبق عليها الصفات نحن نقول أمل ما نستطيع أن نوقت لكن الأمل لا بأس به نأمل Traditions, unfortunately, are, uh, when describing, are very descriptive of the mass killing of the Shias. Sufyani will kill any person called Ali, Hassan, Hussein, Ja'far, Musa, with all of those names, and even Muhammad, all the names of Ahlul Bayt alayhi uh, Some even mention that he will rip the wombs of 400,000 400, women, that I will not Ali... I will not allow any Shia child to be born. So he'll basically attack Iraq from Syria. And unfortunately, Iraq will remain the center of attention. He will establish a state, a government um, in Syria. Al Yamani Shahson, Mu'tamad and Al Imam, Minhasat, Ashab, who are you receiving who? Liahkum Al Yaman. Wa Yukalifu. إذن اليماني وزير ومن الأصحاب الخاصين للإمام سلام الله عليه وواجب الإطاعة على المؤمنين في العالم سبعة أشهر قبل ظهور الإمام يمتحن الشيعة باليماني من يطيعه ومن لا يطيعه والإمام يكون ظاهرا يراه الناس ويرجعهم إلى اليماني وهو يتحرك يهيئ لظهور سلام الله عليه يتحرك في البلاد Yamani will be the most righteous, some traditions mention. He will not be a Sayyid, but he will, his name will be um, uh, unknown to the people. His entire movement will be underground and his flag will be white. Uh, and uh, Khurasani's flag will be black. He'll be Sayyid and there'll be two major people from Iran at the time, from Khurasan, they will revive a state in Iran. Um, Khurasani, his, so he, his name has not been mentioned, will be Sayyid Hassani. 
and Shu'ayb bin Salih will be the army leader, his army. عندنا من علامات الإمام سلام الله عليه أنه يكون خسوف للقمر وكسوف للشمس في غير موعده مثلا القمر يخسف 13 و 14 و 15 هذا يخسف في أوله الشمس كذلك تكسف الشمس خسوف للقمر في أواخر الشهر لا في أوائله وهذا وارد وارد عندنا أيضا نار في شرقي الحجاز تدوم سبعة أيام هذه قريب ظهور الإمام سلام الله عليه من رجب إلى محرم في السنة التالية حوالي سبعة أشهر في هل هذه السبعة أشهر تحدث يكون النداء السماوي في شهر رمضان النداء السماوي نداء باسم الإمام سلام الله عليه بلغات العالم جبرائيل من فوق الكعبة ينادي بعدة لغات عالمية أيها الناس كفاكم ظلما هذا المهدي جاءكم فبايعوه سلام الله عليه وفي رواية أنه في ليلة الجمعة ليلة الثلاثة وعشرين من شهر رمضان سيحة is like a scream that everyone will hear in their own language in the night in ليلة القدر and that will openly disclose that this is ليلة القدر but during the day um, the jal will say that the last night's announcement was wrong and my announcement is the correct or Sofiani or the evil and many people everyone will believe the previous night's announcement but once the false announcement has been made many will convert to the new one many traditions mention that the at the night um, say, Ali wa shi'atuhu humul faizun or Ali wa shi'atuhu um, Ali and his shi'as are the ones who are the righteous at night, you know, once they say Jal Hakuza, they will say that Ali and his followers are on the righteous. And the next day, the announcement will be that Uthman and his followers are the righteous. His announcement will be now Uthman is basically Sufiani that they are pointing to, and Ali and his followers, meaning the Shia, meaning the followers of Imam Mahdi. Because he is known through his two grandfathers, like the Holy Prophet and Imam Ali. Uh, many will die after hearing the scream, it will be so loud. Many will die because of the, the, the fright it will create. The believers will be stronger in their faith, and this will strengthen them even more. But there will be many, many problems during that time. النفس الزكية التي هي علامة الإمام سلام الله عليه شاب صغير السن يعني دون العشرين أو حوالي العشرين حسني يرسله الإمام سلام الله عليه في مكة ليبلغ رسالته لأهل مكة يبعث إلى المسجد الحرام يقرأ الرسالة من تريبون إمام الجماعة فيقتلونه بين الركن والمقام وهذا ليس بينه وبين ظهور الإمام سلام الله عليه إلا خمسة عشر ليلة يعني أسبوعين قبل ظهور الإمام سلام الله عليه فإذا قتلوه لم يبقى لهم في الأرض عاذر ولا في السماء ناصر نفس زكية will not be just a pure soul and no one knows him he'll be a known personality he'll be probably most likely a political figure who is not very old not very young, but he is not middle-aged. So he is young, fairly young, um, who will be a, an important personality, a scholar, a pure soul, who goes on to Hajj, and he'll be murdered there. So he'll be, he'll be a shahadat, and he's a very important personality. 
we have that the appearance of the 12th Imam, which will happen 15 nights after the massacre of Nafsu Zakiya. Nafs Zakiya being an individual, an emissary, and a representative who is sent out by Imam al Hujjah to the world to announce his coming. In the same way that uh, Sayyid al Shuhada sent out Muslim bin Akil, you find Imam al Hujjah sends out Nafs Zakiya, and Nafs Zakiya is martyred. In fact, he is slaughtered within the Haram al Sharif between the Maqam Ibrahim and the Hajar al Aswad for inviting people towards the Mahdi. The hadith says 15 nights from there, on the day of Ashura, you find that the Imam comes forward, makes himself apparent in Mecca by the Kaaba and declares this global announcement that he is the awaited Mahdi and invites people to embark upon this divine journey and this divine mission of filling the entire earth with peace and justice. The traditions say that the Imam al-Islam will come from Mecca and he will appear on the 10th of Muharram. That will coincide with some sort of uh, worldly um, celebration and a lot of the people will not be commemorating the martyrdom of Imam Hussain, but they will be celebrating, which Imam will be not so happy about. He will establish his state, and the 313 will come and pay allegiance to him, and a lot of the people in Mecca will pay allegiance to him. But a lot of the people would want to kill him. So he will stop everyone, uh, he'll fight, and then he'll establish his state. The hadith says that, when he reappears, وَرُوِيَ أَنَّ الْإِمَامَ الْمَحْدِي يَسْنِدْ ذَحْرَهُ إِلَى الْبَيْتِ الْحَرَامِ مُسْتَجِيرًا بِهِ ثُمَّ يَبْتَدِي خُطْبَتَهُ التَّارِيخِيَّةِ The Imam will stand against the Kaaba, his back towards the Kaaba, and then he is going to address the people in a manner which perhaps is the most eloquent of manners and a part of his khutbah is that Imam al-Hujjah shall cry out, أَيُّهَا nas inna nastansiru Allah wa man ahabba wa man ajabana min nas fa inna ahlu bayti nabiyyikum Muhammad wa nahnu awla nas billahi wa bi Muhammad fa man hajjani fi Adam fa ana awla nas bi Adam Imam al hujja will cry out O people who is there who is going to help Allah by helping us Indeed, we are the family and the progeny of this Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Jaysh al-Sufyani al-Quwa al-Lati yursilha li-Hafz al-Aman fi al-Madina. Yutlub minhum idhhabu ila Mecca, hatha zahar al-Mahdi, wa ruh ila Mecca lil-Qadaa alayhi. Hatha ba'da Ashura, ba'da zuhur al-Imam. Yatharrak hathih al-Quwaat min al-Madina, حتى إذا تحركت حوالي خمسين كيلو متر ووصلت إلى البيداء الصحراء خسف بهم هذا يسمى جيش الخسف ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وقف في ذلك المكان وقال هنا يخسف بهم ويعود ولدي في البيت ويقصده جيش للسفياني ويخسف بهم ها هنا ونزلت فيهم الآية وهي قوله تعالى وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ فَزِعُوا فَلَا فَوْتَ وَأُخِذُوا مِنْ مَكَانٍ قَرِيبٍ Amman has emerged from among the Syrian insurgency, launching a vicious attack upon cities surrounding the Jordanian-Syrian border. He began his onslaught from the valleys of Jordan before advancing north towards Syria, in sort of seizing the Syrian capital of Damascus. 
Hundreds of civilians, in particular those who ascribe to the Shiite sect of Islam, have been forcefully displaced from their homes, tortured and abused by members of this barbaric militia. A bloody afternoon at Islam's holiest site. A man was attacked and brutally murdered inside the Grand Mosque in Mecca. Chaos broke out as millions of pilgrims performing the annual Hajj pilgrimage were halted while circulating the Kaaba, the cube-like structure at the heart of the mosque. We await more information. However, reports on the ground suggest a man by the name of Safiani was witnessed fleeing the scene. Irregular weather has been reported in the western region of the Arabian Peninsula, with images coming through of a sweeping sandstorm engulfing vast swathes of the desert. Secondary reports indicate that a paramilitary force who were en route to Mecca encountered the violent winds and have since gone missing. All communication with the contingent has disappeared. It is feared nearly 3,000 men have been buried beneath the desert sands. Um, we have some breaking news coming into CNN right now. Apparently thousands of Muslims are heading towards Mecca, Islam's holy city. After a man has emerged announcing himself as the promised Messiah, scenes of euphoria and celebration are being seen in cities across the world as Muslims refer to this as the arrival of Mahdi, claiming him to be the savior of mankind.